with me. The next one I want to talk about is a pretty horrific, but also semi-hilarious, because you have to find the human something story. Again, for the Daily Mail. Daily Mail has got all the flipping nonsense, garbage, random stories that I need. It says the following. This is courtesy of Daily Mail. I thought he was asleep. He still had a guitar in his hand. Comedian Kate Quigley recalls horrific moment she woke up from a 17-hour blackout to find her friends dead after fentanyl laced cocaine overdose, which killed three and left the hospitalized. I'm sure most of you are aware when this story came to light, um, all over, you know, um, LA podcast scene, whatever community, because Kate Quigley is somebody that a lot of you might know. I know of predominantly through the Joey Diaz podcast. And I always thought she was pretty funny and interesting on that show. I'm not going to lie, even though she does talk excessively about her sexuality and fucking guys and whatnot. I still did think as a guest, she was always really funny. Um, her and Joey Diaz clearly had a real kind of f f um, family-ish kind of bond. She treated him like his uncle. He treated her like a niece. So it was a really cool communication between them on the podcast and whatnot. And just in general, I thought she was just a general good egg. But you could tell she was a girl that likes to party. You could tell she was a party girl. She liked to go out, liked to have some fun. But I didn't know it was this bad, right? In my opinion, I didn't know it was this bad. I knew she was a party girl, maybe a fun time, but I didn't know it was this bad. And then when you heard the story, it was horrific. Because the first thing I thought straight away, I was like, God damn. Imagine having survivor's remorse. Because imagine if you're like the least funny and the least experienced comedian of the group, but you're the one that ends up surviving. Like, yikes. But just in general, too, they're your friends. You end up having a little bit of a boozy night, end up partying, buying some coke in a hotel room, playing some music, hanging around, maybe writing jokes, maybe you're on the TFAK subreddit, and all of a sudden, you wake up at 17 hours later, and all your friends have got foam in their mouth, and they're clearly unresponsive and don't got a heartbeat. Horrific, horrific, horrific stuff. Anyway, the article says the following. Comedian. Kate Quigley has opened up about the horrific moment she woke up from a 17-hour blackout and realized one of her friends was dead from fentanyl overdose, which killed three people in total and left her hospitalized. Quigley was found by the first responders in a critical condition at her 1.8 million rental home in Venice, California um, on September the 4th after allegedly ingesting cocaine that was laced with fentanyl. Yo, fentanyl-laced cocaine dealers need to go to hell because from what I've heard, from what I've heard, from what I've heard, fentanyl is a good substitute for, um, what's the other things they put in it? No, it's not barbiturates, it's that benzos and I've got the other stuff they put in flipping um, coke to basically increase its, um, its mass, right? So you cut it down and if you have like 0 0.4 grams of real coke, you add in 2 grams of fake shit and then it obviously fluffs it up to 0 0.6 and then you lie that 0 0.6 is obviously full cocaine. Fentanyl, from what I've heard, you need to only need to put a tiny bit into the coke and it actually makes it more potent. So when you're sniffing it, it hits you harder and you feel like it's better coke. But then it obviously stretches out the coke more. So if you're a dealer, you can end up selling more for... No, you can end up selling more of it for more money without actually letting go of your good with your good product. And if you're the person selling it from the brick with fentanyl lace in it, it also increases your margins. So that's the reason why people do it. But... Because coke is such a prevalent drug, a first-class drug, in all parts of society, whether it's the highest of the brows, the lowest of the lows have coke, I think it's ridiculous to sell people cocaine that's laced with fentanyl because everyone's taking coke, so you're essentially putting everyone at risk. I think that's horrendous. It continues. Her fellow comics, Enrico Rico Conlagli, 48, Faquan Johnson, 42, died alongside their friend Natalie Williams, 33. Free people! holy shit at the home after the group re reportedly snorted the lethal drugs together she was now she has now spoken now about the incident in the upper cup episode of jacob Pin pinkett's show red table talk of course red table talk stays with the mess recording the moment that she first realized something was not right and, re and revealing she lost consciousness for 17 hours imagine losing consciousness for 17 hours that isn't just cocaine bro that is a boozy night Maybe some other drugs are involved too. That is mad, bro. Mad, mad, mad. That's only God's grace shining on her that she woke up from her um, unconscious sleep because 17 hours is a mad time to sleep. Um, it continues here. Okay, that was a place in Venice. Looks lovely. Um, oh, RIP, man, to uh, Rico, boy. Jesus Christ. It says the following. I went to the bathroom and on the way to the bathroom, I couldn't even button up my pants. I was already that disorientated. Um, okay, button, not button up, sorry. 
and I said, something's not right about this. I don't feel well. I knew right away something was uh, wrong. I felt nauseous. I sat down and that's the last thing I remember. Oh, you know what makes this more tragic? If I'm not mistaken, wasn't Kate Quigley dating the black guy involved in this? I remember last time I checked her Instagram page like ages ago because I think she was on Joe Diaz's show and she was talking that she was, cause, you know, Kate Quigley is always talking about her horrible dates and, you know, maybe the fact that she's, you know, she hooks up with people too randomly and whatnot and her dating life was too fucked up. And she was so happy about whoever she was dating. I think it might have been that black guy. She was like, oh my God, he's amazing, blah, 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 blah. She was like legitimately in love. She was glowing on the podcast. Listen to it. I'm sure she was dating the other guy involved. <sighs> Imagine that, bro. Holy shit. Not only some of your best friends that you go out on tour with, who you pick up with, who you have good times with, also the guy that you're dating who you legitimately are in love with ends up passing away. Um. Anyway, she said, I felt nauseous. I sat down and that's the last thing I remember. Tearing up and emotional quickly said she then passed out in her chair at around 6 a.m., waking up nearly 17 hours later, completely disoriented and confused. She says, I passed out on the chair like sideways. And when I passed out, my legs stayed in the chair. My head hit the floor. So she was legitimately in a chair like that, like bent over in them. So that must have been an absolutely horrific sight for the first responders to flip in fine when they got on the scene. Right. Not only was Kate Quigley probably looking all disheveled, everyone else was probably, however they were sniffing coke or however they were lying or sitting down, it's probably how they ended up passing away. So in a chair, lying down on the settee, like on the sink, like they must have been in some crazy positions. Oh my God, this is like a horror show. Um, she says, um, and then she says, the first thing I thought, I swear to God was, oh my God, why is it so dark? My doors are open. I was confused. I'm not a big drinker and I've never blacked out. I was just confused. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Why do people who always get in passer when it comes to drugs and alcohol always say this type of stuff? This is equivalent to like girls when they get um, asked about their cosmetic surgery. Be like, I've never had any, um, I only had a, I've only had a boob job. I've only had a nose job. Come on. You don't get into this kind of scenario and you're not a big drinker. You don't suddenly end up in a, in a Venice rental apartment on tour with four of your best friends picking up coke and this is the first time you've got blackout drunk. Come on, girl. Come on. It's, but people always do this. They always have like this little caveat. I'm not really a big drinker. <clears throat> I don't really do that many drugs. Like You do. I couldn't feel my legs, but I thought they were asleep. I went to stand and that's when I realised. As the, as the former Playboy uh, TV undercover host began to realise that had happened, she tried to wake her friend Rico who was across from her. She said, it never crossed my mind that they were dead because it looked like he was sleeping. It wasn't until she threw a shoe at him and he didn't wake up that she started to think something was seriously wrong. <gasps> God damn, bruv. She probably threw a shoe at him and knowing girls, because they're not good at throwing, they end up fr hitting you always in the face. That's what always happens when girls throw stuff at you because girls can't throw, but the first time they do throw something, it hits you flush in the face. She hit him in the face and he didn't move an inch. Yikes, not even like a fidget. Shit. She recalled, I started to get scared. I started to say, Hey, Rico, Rico, I just thought he was asleep. He even still had that guitar. He was holding the guitar in his hands. It never crossed my mind that he was dead because he didn't look dead. I called my uncle. I still thought Rico was okay until I threw a shoe at the door next to him and he didn't wake up. God almighty. Uh, among the victims was Johnson, who was frequent performer at the comedy store. Perform yeah, so yeah, I'm pretty sure she was dating this black guy. Who was this guy? What's his name? Johnson. I'm pretty sure she was dating him because I remember she was talking about him on podcast. <clears throat> That's her apartment. Looks, it was, to be fair, the place looks like a lovely place to do coke. Not going to lie. <clears throat> as bad as it might be to say, it does look like a, a great place to do it. Um, oh, I hate this woman. She's still talking. The terrified little girl. Fuck off, Jada Pinkett Smith. Anyway, I started to panic and two minutes later, my uncle walked in and immediately walked over and touched him and he was cold and called 911. <gasps> what? The rest, I mean, see, this is the part that I had to talk about. It's hard to talk about. It was horrific. The incident came amid a nationwide crisis of a fentanyl, a synthetic opioid that is 10 to 100, 80 to 100 times stronger than morphine and 50 times stronger than heroin. It is often added to drugs like cocaine or heroin to increase the potency and to make them more profitable. It can lead to an overdose, and especially if the buyer doesn't know uh, uh, it's laced with it. But do people take fentanyl recreationally? That's a comment for the chat. Do people know? 
do people take are people out there buying fentanyl on its own and then doing it fent uh, recreationally? I'm sure they must be, right? What do you guys think? Because I, I don't know. Because I, I, from what I know, I just know it's being like a thing people are putting into drugs to make it more potent. But are people out there legitimately buying fent so that they could do fent? I don't know how they take it. I don't know if it comes in crystal form, if they inject it. Yeah, they do. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, cool. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, according to drug abuse statistics, less than 0, 0.0 ounces of fentanyl causes death. This is why fentanyl sounds very, very similar to uh, GHB, which in my industry, in my area of expertise, which is um, techno music, dance music, electronic music, club culture, GHB, especially within the LGBTQ plus scene, is incredibly popular. And I remember seeing it for the first time when I went to uh, a very popular nightclub, let's say. And I was in the toilets there with like seven randoms and they were all doing GHB. And I, didn't, I just hadn't seen it in my life. And what I remember them doing is getting out a, a, a bottle with a lid and then pouring this liquid into it from a syringe and then handing it to people and then drinking it, like taking like a shot. And, but they were being very precise about making sure it was only the measurement of that lid cup. And I think it might even been half a lid cup. It was really small. They're doing it scientifically. I was like, oh, this is this looks way too cracky for me to kind of get involved in. Do you know what I mean? Make it fun. Do you know what I mean, this looks this look way, like, way too much work. And it's like doing it. I was like, okay, fair enough. I have a good time. And it was only later on that I found out that was GHB. But GHB has been a real problem in the dance music scene because people, obviously, when you're going out to a club, you obviously got other drugs in you, most likely. You're probably drinking. Um, you maybe, you know, aren't hydrated. You probably aren't well fed. Loads of these things are probably going to, you know, affecting how you are when you take that drug and then you take it and you don't dose it properly and then bang, it could be lethal. I remember the peak of the pandemic, a couple of people died, I think, in London. Um, because of uh, GHB in nightclubs and stuff, um, especially underground ones and whatnot. I'm pretty sure a couple of sex parties have that happened or somebody got raped or something. Because that's something I've read is what people start doing. They start using GHB as a weird date rape thing because obviously it makes you it makes you black out and whatnot. Um, but yeah, crazy. The rising death toll, the, the, but yeah, look, this is the people that passed away. Rico, fuck me. God damn it, man. Let's the other guy too. Johnson. Art the Innocent. After the incident, um, quickly spent a week in hospital at the time. She said she was shocked and devastated by the loss of three of her friends that touched an Instagram post. I feel overwhelmed by the outpouring of kind messages and incredible gratitude to be surrounded by a strong community of friends, family, and colleagues, and fans who have offered the support. Words could describe the pain I'm feeling. Johnson was a generous, loving soul. He was hilarious, supportive, incredibly authentic with the, with the most affectionate spirit. Rico was always filled with enthusiasm. Um, uh, and they made each other an indeniable mark on my life and livelihoods. Uh... She also defended herself after it claimed that she had taken a lot of heat for not saying something about her friends immediately after the deaths. Oh, really? People were getting at her for not what not coming out with the R.I.P. Bruv, she was she was in the room where all three of her friends died. Bruv, she thought they were still. That's the thing, though. She thought they were still alive because she just thought they were just drunk or whatnot. God damn it! I was really trying to stay alive for days. I'm still really focusing what happened. She explained in the post. It's not every day you wake up to find people dead in your house. I can't comment on who supplied what. The truth is, doesn't really matter. If you do any illegal drugs, you're basically signing a contract that says, I accept that I might die sooner than I would like. We all know that. I'm not posting to talk about details of what occurred. Fair enough. At the time, Colanglia's cousin, Maria Spencer, spoke to his son about the family's heartbreak over the death. Rico was incredibly loved by his entire family will miss him more than words can describe. She remembered the cousin as not only a smart talented comedian, but also a highly skilled carpenter who works for the family's construction company. Jesus Christ, man. So all these people, so what, three people are dead, two of them are dead, right? Left Rico and Johnson. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I'm sure that's the guy that she was dating. I'm pretty sure that was him. Oh, no. Sorry. Okay, the guy that she was dating was this guy. Darius Rucker. Singer from Who in a Blowfish. Okay, cool. That, I guess, I think that was the guy she was talking about in the podcast. Maybe it wasn't Johnson. My bad. I take it back. Maybe this was the guy she was dating. And I, can't, I guess they broke it off. Um, Jesus Christ, man. Yeah, but yeah, um, be careful with your drugs, isn't it? Be careful with your drugs out there, people. Be careful with your drugs. Um, and also, uh, yeah, just be careful with your drugs. To be fair, in the UK, we have, people are getting into this whole drug testing thing. There's little kits that you can buy where you can test your drugs to make sure it is somewhat, um, somewhat, uh, po somewhat uh, real. Oh, really? Is that pissed into the chat? Darius Rucker owns the house that's happening. Shit. So most likely they still were dating at the time then, she, if they're staying at the house. 
if he lent them the house to kind of stay in after whatever. God damn it. Yeah, big up Mo 